After watching a dozen of unboxing, first impressions, and review videos on the new M2 MacBook Air, I've made some conclusions and I want to share them with you. The question is whether the new M2 MacBook Air is worth the upgrade and its price of $1,200, and whether Apple's most recent, newest, latest, maybe the greatest, is worth it, so stick around and find out. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be chatting you through some of the major updates when it comes to the new M2 MacBook Air, which has been out for some time now. And honestly, I've seen almost every other video on YouTube on the new M2 MacBook Air because I was so excited, but I decided to compile the most important, the juicy details when it comes to the updates and share them with you on my channel. I will tell you this, mostly YouTubers are comparing the new M2 MacBook Air, of course, with the previous generation, the M1 MacBook Air. That makes a lot of sense because this is supposed to be its successor and it's supposed to top the best-selling laptop from Apple. And if we ask the question whether this M2 MacBook Air will top the sales of the M1 MacBook Air, I think I have two answers to that question. The short one is no, and the long one is no, it won't top the previous generation of MacBook Airs. Okay, so first let's talk about the design. The design has been the major improvement, especially when it comes to the outer body of this laptop. And I have some mixed opinions on this. So the new MacBook Air features Apple's new design language, which has been consistent and the same as on the 2021 MacBook Pros. They have just made it, of course, slimmer and lighter. But my thing is, there is no defining characteristic of this laptop in comparison to those ones, to the Pro versions of the MacBooks. Previously, you had this wedge-shaped design on the M1 MacBook Airs, which really stood out from the MacBook pros and in my opinion it gave you the impression that the laptop is very thin and light and very easy to carry around. The wedge was something that I recognized the MacBook Air is by and now it's gone so I'm not sure that I'm a fan of this design. And also do you remember the color schemes and palettes that we had when the laptop was about to come out? None of that is really true. We didn't get any of the pastel or any of the bright colors. But talking about the color, let's mention the new midnight color. So the first thing that you have to know about Apple's midnight is that it varies across devices. Whilst on this laptop it looks very blue. Besides the fact that it's a fingerprint magnet and that you will go crazy if you are someone who likes to keep your devices very clean, this color is a very thin layer of paint on top of the aluminum chassis underneath, which means, as it has been pointed out by some YouTubers already, that you will have the issues of scratching, especially around the ports. Maybe the best way to go around this is to stick with the classic silver options. Once you scratch the silver underneath, you also have this silver aluminum body which or chassis, which really makes the scratches look less noticeable. And honestly, as someone who has the 2015 MacBook Pro, which is silver, obviously, I can't see any scratches around the ports on this version. So maybe just not go with the new midnight color. What I think is important to mention when it comes to the laptop is its ports. It is lacking an SD card slot, you will have to get the annoyance called a dongle. Now this MacBook Air also features a new display. So from the front it features a newer display with thinner bezels than the previous generation, which is a big improvement. For some reason they are not as thin as on the 2021 MacBook Pros, but the lower bezel is the same thickness as the previous M1 MacBook Air as well. And on top of the display this laptop is featuring a new camera, the 1080p camera, which is supposed to improve the camera quality, of course, and give you a more crisp looking image. However, I'm not sure that the improvement is substantial. Now, the camera brings some color quality improvements, but talking about the overall quality of the camera, it hasn't been that much improved. So this new camera seems to have improved the situation of colors, but not the overall quality of the camera. Also, you know, when you switch from 720p to 1080p, especially on a smaller screen, the improvement is zero to none. That's the same situation with this camera. The speaker setup has also been 
relocated from the sides to the back slash under the lid, which is supposed to bring a richer audio quality. But what I keep hearing in these videos is that the improvement is very marginal. But I will give Apple some credit here because once you create a very brilliant device, which the M1 MacBook Air certainly is, it's hard to top yourself and it's hard to make a device that's a lot better than the previous one. If the wheel is invented, why go out and try to reinvent it? You just try to improve it a little bit and that's exactly what Apple has been doing with this laptop. So talking about more minor updates, the keyboard layout has also been refreshed and now the keyboard features full size function keys. But of course we have to commend and applaud Apple for its amazing keyboards because these are some of the best keyboards and laptops out there. And there is a small change in the, in the color of the keys than on the M1 MacBook Airs. Now where I agree that a noticeable and honestly important change has happened is the introduction of MagSafe to these MacBook Airs. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the MagSafe on Apple's laptops. First of all, it means that you have a dedicated port for charging. You don't have to use some of your other ports just to simply get some juice into your laptop. So having a dedicated charging port is very useful. And also, you know how much I love MagSafe from its LED indicator to the magnets themselves and how intuitive the whole setup is, especially for people with disabilities as well. So I really welcome this, this change. So the new M2 MacBook Air supports Apple's fast charge, which means that you can get 50% of juice in under 30 minutes if you use a 67 watt power adapter. And now you have different adapters or power bricks that you can order with your MacBook. And you can even order a dual port power adapter if you want to charge your MacBook and for example, your iPhone as well at the same time. Coming to the controversy of newer Apple or the M2 Apple products. On the base variants of the M2 MacBook Airs, you will get a slower type of SSD, which means that your read and write speeds will be drastically slower than on the base versions on the M1 MacBook Air, which has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. A lot of YouTubers are recommending that you go a spec up, but then of course that adds additional $200 at least. This will be felt in real world usage as well. This advice is to be taken seriously if you're considering to purchase the M2 MacBook Air. I will give credit again where credit is due and that is that the M2 processor is much more powerful than the M1 processor. And you will feel these speed increases here and there, especially if you work in professional creative programs. But the thing is it can reach its full potential only in the short term. As it continues to handle all of these more intensive tasks and programs, it will start to throttle and to overheat, which means that less power is going to be consumed by the processor, which means that, of course, it will slow down as well to cool itself. Because remember, MacBook Airs don't have an active cooling system, which is a fancy way of saying that they don't have a fan. You will notice that the speed will start to drop back down as you work for prolonged amounts of time. The fanless design of the M2 MacBook Air is not the most suitable for this very powerful processor. So the question is, are you really getting to reap the benefits of this much more powerful processor than the M1 processor? Or are you really paying just for the name? Also, weirdly enough, in some of these tests and, and runs by YouTubers, the temperatures of this chip reach about a 108 degrees Celsius, which is substantially more than, for example, Intel processors and chips in previous Apple devices or laptops. So this processor is apparently designed to handle these higher temperatures. But honestly, you know that tech, which is exposed to extreme temperatures for a long time, for a couple of years, maybe it starts to degrade faster and to lose its performance over time. So I'm not sure whether this is, let's say, a sustainable option. That's been pretty much it when it comes to these apps. Updates. If you enjoyed this video, of course, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and help me out to reach a substantial amount of subscribers to upgrade my video quality and to give me this strength and will and courage to continue filming for all of you. I will see you in the next one. Bye.